Welcome to the Dr. John Shaw Holistic Health Show. We're going to be talking about a very popular subject that affects most Americans. It's called muscle pain. And we're going to talk about what's really wrong with you and muscle, how muscles can affect your health. But today we have a really privilege to interview one of the most uh, professional people I've seen in terms of being able to help assess your muscle pain. And uh, so let's introduce to you Clyde Mealy. Tell me something about you, Clyde. Hey, Dr. Shah, thank you for having me on the show today. Uh, I got started in the fitness business about 10 years ago, and I was unhealthy myself. I was about 100 pounds overweight and it took me about 16 months to reach optimal health and a healthy weight and that's what inspired me to go back to school to get my master of science in rehabilitation to help people get back on track with their health with their flexibility as well as their mobility okay and i see a whole bunch of degrees here tell me a little bit about that uh the the master of science in rehabilitation is through the College of Exercise Science. Mm -hmm. So I learned basically the physiology, the biomechanics, the bioenergetics involved with getting the body back on track and healthy with what you do as well. Mm -hmm. I have several certifications or credentials through the National Academy of Sports Medicine. Corrective exercise is my specialty, as well as performance enhancement, fitness nutrition, senior fitness, and weight loss. Mm, great. You know, and I'm, I'm a doctor, a holistic doctor. Yes. And now we don't specialize in anything because we're holistic, but one of the things we have is called how to re reduce your pain yes. without drugs and needles, okay? And this is the thing. So we can get with different types of equipment and different techniques, uh, Eastern kind of medicine like acupuncture, acupressure, yes. and all the different high-tech equipment. And we can bring the cells up to a better vitality, but we can't make the muscle strong if you haven't used it. Exactly. Make, huh? And that's where exercise comes That's in. right. That's yeah. where exercise. But, you know, everybody thinks, well, I'm going to exercise. I'm going to go ahead and stretch, and that's good. You know, And they feel a little better because you get more circulation coming in. Exactly. But why does the pain come back? Well, the pain comes back, I think, from my experience, is inconsistency. Mm -hmm. They're not doing enough. They're not tying in other mm -hmm. elements. Mm -hmm. into making their body stronger. Mm -hmm. And that's why I joke with my clients, I say it's exercise science for a reason. Mm -hmm. You can do any exercise incorrectly and further injure yourself. Okay, good. So what we do basically is we bring it to the point where the, the body cells, the muscle cells, can help repair itself. But yes. if the, bus the muscle cells are fatigued, it's gonna be a long haul before you exactly. can bring it up. Atrophy sets in. That's right, and then the muscle needs to be stronger. So tell me, you know, a lot of people do their own di uh, diagnosis, you get rehab, and you get all these different people doing it, lasers and um, ultrasounds and all these different things. And all of them help, there's no question about yes, it. Yes, no doubt, okay? no doubt. But the part about it is, do we look at beyond that, beyond the physical, we're going to look at the mental, emotional, and physical, and the spiritual. There's four exactly, things, right. Okay? There's several phases of health to, to incorporate. So the physical part, tell me, when you look at someone, what do you do? Now, I'm going to show you some slides right now, and he's going to, Clyde's going to explain some of the things that he looks okay. for in assessing the physical aspect of the body. Exactly. Okay, All let's right. look at the slides, okay? Explain to me what this is. Okay, first diagram we have here, we have a person that's doing a rotation to their left. Mm -hmm. And for me, when I'm looking at the kinetic chain, it can start at the foot, ankle, knee, hip, or where this diagram is starting is at the hip and upper back. The hip and the... Uh, sure. Right here. Yeah, okay. Hip and upper back. Can they rotate properly mm -hmm. without compensating? Okay. So if we move on to the second one, have the pe person facing forward. Can they rotate and have their hips in the frontal plane or lateral? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we look at the next slide here, and uh, what's, what's happening here? Right here is a traditional reach test to see how much flexion you have, and that will actually look, I would look at the gastrocnemius or calf, the hamstring, the gluteals, and low back, 
as well as the latissimus dorsi and the serratus anterior. Okay, so now we, we're kind of concentrating more on the lower back, okay, for this segment here. Okay, so now we're going to be looking at another diagram again, and furthermore, he's going to show you some anatomy. Now, right here in the first one, what I'm looking at here is the, the low back or the superior iliac spine and looking at probably the sciatic nerve area and the gluteal. And right here, showing the two thumbs on those two little indentations we all have on our back. And right here is a manipulation of that looking more on the interior. And then the one over to the far right is the, the actual spine, looking at to see if that's aligned properly for posture. So a lot of people have, as we know, they have a lot of things about, they talk about hip pain. Yes. And they don't know the correlation between the hip pain and the spine and, and how the hip can create problems in terms of pain going down to the knee and beyond. Exactly. Right? So we're going to show you a diagram here, and you can see this, explain that little diagram there. Right here we have a group of muscles around the hip joint. To sh so this right here shows that there's a synergistic approach, that it's not just a segmented muscle that causes the pain, it's a group of muscles. We have the adductors, the extensors, we have the flexors, we have the medial, the lateral, and the anterior that provides the movement we need in the hip joint which can also exacerbate tight hamstrings, sciatic pain that can shoot down the leg, and low back pain, as well as affect the knee and the foot ankle. Okay, so very common. You see a, a lot of people have pain going down from the hip exactly. and the spine, and they think, well, I have to treat. Uh, I have to treat just the, that location. And, and that's not correct. Yeah, that's right, yeah. because it didn't get the source. Exactly. Okay, so we're going to talk about a little more about how the source we can actually find out where the sauce is coming from exactly. for repeated pain. So let's look at something that a lot of people do have. And some people, have, the thing lasts about two days and some... It's yeah, chronic. It's chronic. Yeah. And that's called sciatica pain. Okay, sciatica pain. Let's look at that right now. Okay, okay. now if you see here, that's nestled deep inside the, the gluteals or the buttocks. Mm -hmm. And that nerve can actually send that pain signal down the leg as we discussed, mm -hmm. into the hamstrings, to the knee, and all the way down to the foot where some people may experience some numbness or pins and needle feeling. So would you say that if, say, a surgeon says, you gotta have some kind of like stenosis, means narrowing, and I'll show you what the stenosis means, okay. narrowing of that spine, okay? okay? Would you think, how, how did the spine get narrow? Would you think that maybe the muscles are constantly be contracted, causing pressure in there, and narrow the spine down? Or that's, that's one cause. That's one of the causes, yeah. right? But most people would say, well, you need surgery. Somebody recommends surgery because they saw it on an MRI. Okay. And does an MRI show muscles? No. Oh, so they show alignment. So how do we know? I mean, do a CAT scan show the muscles and how it's compressing the, uh, the spine? Probably not. Yeah, okay. So then, how did he come up with, you got to get surgery? I guess because they're surgeons. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> well, anyhow, so we're going to show this hot spot right here, okay? okay. So now, I'm going to show you something that a lot of times we think, okay, we got this problem, mm -hmm. and let's go to the location. Let's put an instrument on, maybe a laser. Let's put on maybe acupuncture point. Let's put a needle there. Or let's put in some ultrasound or some vibrating machine, massage machine. Is that permanent? No, it's temporary. Temporary, okay. So now, now we talked about now nerve getting compressed and that can cause the pain. But what about thing called trigger points or tender points? Is that such a thing? Yes, it is. And that's what? something I deal with as well in, in, in my practice. Oh, good. So let's show something about the sciatic nerve here. And uh, we'll show you, okay, and then you explain that you see these X's here versus the, the uh, where it migrates. Okay. okay. So looking at the first one, we have the X's here, and then we have that tender or hot spot in the, in the gluteal or butt cheek, and we have here the IT band or iliotibial band. And it goes down to the knee, down to the, uh, the shin or the peroneals, down into the foot ankle. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you know the thing is right now is when we see this pain here, and now they feel on the... Glutus maximus, right? 
the butt. Yes. The, and he said, oh, that's the pain. So most people are going to go treat that area, right? Exactly. But, what, but if you look on this diagram, you see the X's here, what are called trigger points, or here on the muscles. It's not right over the butt. Exactly. So if you go treat the butt, you get some relief. But it's temporary. It's temporary, right? Yes. And so it can fool people not familiar with these anatomy and these, these different uh, things that can cause the pain. They can be like uh, nerve can cause a pain. Exactly. Right? exactly. It can be uh, lack of circulation from the bloodstream on blood vessels. Okay. It can be from uh, a disease, uh, from Ex cystitis or ileo <coughs> uh, irritable bowel syndrome or exactly. appendicitis or it causing hip pain. Everybody says, okay, but is the muscle involved also in that? Oh, yeah. Sedentary lifestyle. A lot of sitting can mm -hmm. cause sciatic issues. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. So now we talk about here, we talked about certain ways of we call only doctors can say diagnosis, so we right. call assessment, okay? Yes. So, we talked about diagnosing, okay, and we're talking about assessment. Let's talk about MRIs, okay? Let's talk about the MRIs. Now, you see that MRIs? Are people are familiar with MRIs. But MRIs, as we said, okay, doesn't show you if the muscles Atrophy tight. Atrophy tight, exactly. Tight. It only shows misalignment. Right. And so, the person who makes a diagnosis, says, oh, you misalignment there, and perhaps you need some kind of surgery or some things like that yeah. to put it in place. But the muscle's all tight, and the muscle's been tight constantly. And maybe years. What? Maybe years. So how in the world are you going to be able to do the surgery if you do the surgery, and that's going to correct the problem? Exactly. That's why a lot of people who have surgery still got pain. And they don't fully recover no. after the surgery. After the surgery, what, what, you lost options. They don't have any options. The pain pills don't work anymore. So what are you going to do now? Yeah. You're stuck. The body's smart. It adjusts. It compensates. So what happens is with, with the type of therapy that you do, you can strengthen the muscles. We work on the memory of the muscles. Mm -hmm. Exactly. The key is what? The brain. You said it, Doc. You, you, know, how many, it. you know how many cells you have in your body? Probably over a trillion? Seven, 70 trillion cells. There you go. I knew you knew the answer. And every time you go through pain, mm -hmm. yeah, you're going to go through one episode. And then we put, we call that, I call that layers. Okay. And so you get one, it's like a bottle. And the source of pain you might have had if you fell down or you strained it or whatever, maybe exactly. 50 years ago. Yeah. And every time you feel the pain, you put a layer on, a layer on, a layer on. Now, if you just use on the site, any kind of modality, acupuncture, injection, steroid injections, it doesn't go to the brain and erase that memory. It's and temporary. so it re recaptures. Because every time the person feels the pain, guess what? He puts a new layer on there. Exactly. And how in the world are you going to get rid of it? But if you increase the cellular uh, energy of the muscles, and then you put the other modalities on, the body had a chance to repair itself. Exactly, and that's the key. Having yes. the body repair or heal itself. Sure. So then, so we're going to take this, and uh, I'm just going to tell you that how many people got, you know, the, the people that you worked on, uh, training, training them to get better health, got varicose veins? Unfortunately, too many. Too many? Oh, too wow. many. Okay. Yeah. And so what varicose veins got to do with muscles? Usually it's from a lot of standing, carrying excess weight, and activity. And nothing is ever done about it until they have surgery. And sometimes that doesn't work. And have you ever seen some of your clients have black feet? Their skin's all uh, black. Unfortunately, I have not. Oh, you haven't? Yeah. Good gosh. We've got to show you. We've got to send you more. <laughs> well, that's one of the things they say, lack of circulation. But okay. you can see the skin's all black on the feet. Okay. You just look. So the varicose veins can cause pain. And then what about... Irritable bowel syndrome, I told you about irritable bowel syndrome, just, just, just as a matter of fact, okay? Well, typically with something like that, it could come from stress, mm -hmm. come from the environment. Once again, we, we talked about the brain, sometimes mm -hmm. that's the source of mm -hmm. that chronic stress and irritability, and it's probably what they eat, the wrong foods, something too acidic, mm -hmm. too many medications, that sort of thing. Can that contribute to hip pain? Exactly. Yeah. A lot of abdominal cramping, bloating, mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. restricted movement. Yeah, okay. So that's what. But one of the main things that we talked about, and you and I had discussed, is what? 
scar adhesions. Yes. Uh, something yes. like that, okay? And this sort of thing is very common. If you've ever been active, if you had an accident, and you didn't follow the protocol of maybe physical therapy, mm -hmm. you're gonna build up scar tissue and adhesions, which is gonna limit the way your joints move and the ability for your muscles to help move mm -hmm. those joints. Okay, so now, you ever heard of spondylolisthesis? Uh, no, I have not. Okay, now, see, if people get con contraction, super contraction of the spine, and then the spine starts to narrow, Okay. So what's the, what's the um, surgical approach to that? Probably as this uh, diagram explains, it looks like there's a titanium rod or something in, yeah. in place mm -hmm. in the body. Yeah, because you see on the MRIs, a, mis a misalignment. Misalignment again. Yeah. And then you see that it's judgment call. Compression. Like it's compression, and you see the transverse process comes together, getting closer together. Then it's, oh, you got to get that spread out because it's pinching the nerve. Which sends out the signals to the muscles. That's right. Yeah. And then so it weakens the muscle, right? So yeah. because it doesn't have the right signals. And so they put a pin and two rod, to put the two, and they put it together to keep that spine open. And you get some relief. But sometimes how long? Temporary. Temporary, okay. And, uh, and we mentioned about stretching. So anyhow. So let's say, let's talk about, we talked about muscle memory. Yes. Okay. And we talked about, uh, how, tell me, how successful are you, can you, um, how, how successful are you able to overcome the use of drugs and, and uh, surgery for muscle pain? Well, in my practice over the past 10 years, what I've liked, what I've liked to do is start at the foot ankle and work my way up the kinetic chain up to the knee, low back hip, thoracic, and cervical spine, and use stretching techniques, static mm -hmm. stretching, dynamic stretching, and foam rolling or self-myofascial release. And we're going to show that in the next yes, show. Yes, that okay. will be something we'll show in the next oh, show. Okay. Yeah. And so you don't have to have a lot of equipment, gym no, equipment? very minimal. You just have mm -hmm. to be disciplined to actually do it on a regular basis. And so what I'm hearing you saying, you can do it on your own, but the next thing <laughs> is how many people had the discipline right, that's to keep I, doing on your own. I, unfortunately, not many, and that's what helps, keeps me busy. Okay, yeah. and so a lot of people say, well, I can do it on my own, and I go down to the gym, or I can go buy this equipment called the treadmill, and everything, I put it in my house, and I can get all the things, exercise I want. Is that true? That's true, but as always, with great intentions, there's very little follow through. That yeah. treadmill becomes a very expensive hangar or storage area. Okay, so then uh, the biggest thing is, are they, are they prof really, do they have all the knowledge or the prof on a professional basis to be able to do it properly without injuring other muscles? Exactly, uh, yeah. and that's where someone like myself would come in to play as well as your, mm -hmm. your practice, mm -hmm. is the expertise mm -hmm. to keep them on track, keep them disciplined, hold them accountable, yeah, and get results, and that's I, what we do. And that's motivation. Exactly. And so you're, you do a lot of motivation. A lot of motivation. Okay, good, good. And uh, does it have to do with behavior, lifestyles, and things like that? You hit the nail right on the head. Mm -hmm. It's behavior modification. It's lifestyle change. It's discipline. Mm -hmm. It's taking those daily steps to improve your life. Okay. And so if you just do, say, for instance, I have some people who jog, and we send some patients to you. Yes, to jog. yes, you have. Okay. Thank you so much. And they jog, they've gone marathons, and I, you know, I get a number of marathoners coming in. They're getting you know, all back pain, knee pains, all these yeah. from running a, a lot of different terrains, you know. Exactly. And they do all the stretching. How come these people still get, they got pain now? I think a lot of it comes from inadequate stretching. Mm -hmm. You know, just because you say you stretch doesn't mean it's adequate. Mm -hmm. Probably diet, being dehydrated, Mm -hmm. is a big issue today. People don't drink enough water. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. And I think with what we do is we get them back on track with the basics, staying mm -hmm. hydrated, staying flexible, staying mobile, and that's key. Is uh, exercising every day uh, good for you, or should you do a rest period between exercises? I would say cardiovascular activity or exercise is good every day. American mm -hmm. College of Sports Medicine and the Surgeon General dictate 60 minutes of activity mm -hmm. every day, walking, cycling, jogging, hiking, anything like that. Mm -hmm. But exercise at least 24 to 48 hours of recovery Okay. in between. So you need a recovery? Yes, you need uh, a recovery period. So I know some of my friends who are 
professional weightlifters. And they take one part of the body one day and they do it the other part of the body. Well, what do you think about that? For bodybuilding, that does work because if you focus an hour, hour and a half on just biceps, you're actually mm -hmm. letting the rest of the body rest or recover mm -hmm. and then hit another muscle group. But not the average person can work out that way. We just don't have the time and that's not our goal. Mm -hmm. and, then, and some people say, well, you know, I got it down. I go into the sauna. I spend maybe five, ten minutes. Then I go into the uh, jacuzzi. Then I go do a aqua exercise and that's good enough. Well, with exercise, it's, it's very customized. If that's what works for that individual, that's mm -hmm. okay. But if their result is weight loss or, or increased strength, I don't mm -hmm. think they're going to get it from the jacuzzi or, or mm -hmm. sauna. Okay. You know, it's funny because I started on Thanksgiving <laughs> with this boot camp. And, man, I cut. I mean, it was, I felt like rubber the next yeah, day. Yeah, but you did well, though. Oh, I did. Impressive. <laughs> I did only impressive. Have, have that. And one of your uh, trainers asked me, uh, you're going to do it today? And no, I says, I, my goal is within two to three weeks, I will try to finish that whole thing. So I'm, I'm gearing. Go. So I'm going every day. So there's the brain at work. You yeah, set brain. a goal. Okay, the brain. <laughs> There you go. But I do feel some effects in the day, so I have to work on myself every day. Yes. Okay, so tell me, um, uh, you, you got me showing some body-friendly exercises. What do you mean by body-friendly exercises? Body-friendly exercises are basically body weight exercises, calisthenics, things we can do with very little space, no equipment. Mm -hmm. If done correctly, they're going to be safe, but they're going to be effective. Mm -hmm. Something like a body weight squat, mm -hmm. a hip stretch, or a shoulder stretch. Or what I talked about a little bit earlier is the foam roller, the okay. self-myofascial release. So we're going to show that. Yes, we're make sure. yes, we're going to show that. And what do you do first? Do you warm up first uh, or do you stretch first? Which is Typically with the foam roller, I like to start with that mm -hmm. for about five to seven minutes and then go into what is called a static stretch or a lengthening phase, mm -hmm. then an activation phase, and then an integrated phase. Okay. Oh, and so then just bring it back around full circle. The, the whole process takes about 20 minutes. Oh, 20 so minutes. 20 huh? minutes, not long mm -hmm. at all. Oh, and what do you do after 20 minutes? Then after that, you can either work out, go running, jogging, hiking, whatever activity you want to do. Oh, okay. So it's a great way to prepare the body for activity mm -hmm. or exercise. You know, I was, I was in martial arts for 13 years. You know, I was a 30 degree black belt, you know. So I was pretty good shape, but at still, one still time, in pretty good shape. <laughs> Not according to myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's in better shape. He's in better shape, yeah. 50 years younger. There you go. <laughs> but at one time, we were doing, um, uh, before we were doing stretching. Okay. And then we went to the motion exercise where we started doing like cardiovascular. And then we saw, so I, I told the professor, hey, look, uh, we, we saw some things here that we're supposed to do the opposite. We do the motion, I said, get warm up first and do the stretching. Well, which one would you think is the right way? Basically, just the way you explained it. Mm -hmm. Part of my program is to do the foam roller first mm -hmm. and then actually go into static, mm -hmm. then to an activated movement that mimics what you're going to do, mm -hmm. and then an integrated movement tying everything together using those muscles we just loosened up. Mm -hmm. So I know that there's so many equipment. I said, I started going to 24 Hour Fitness. And there's so many equipment. And you, Probably you, 300 you, pieces. Uh, 300. And you look at that and it says, well, which one I'm going to use or, or how do I start? And that's the intimidating part. And that's yeah. where a health professional, someone mm -hmm. like yourself or myself, mm -hmm. to kind of come in and guide you through that, that maze of 300 pieces of equipment and where do you start and how do you do it. So it's customized to you. Exactly. Okay, Based on your, abil you know, your ability, your limitations, your current health status. Oh, okay. So not everybody that comes into uh, a training like yours, you do the same thing. No, it's different. Oh, it's different. And all, all the trainers do the same thing? Um, I think they should yeah. if, if they're not doing it. Okay. Because right. you introduced me to several and I look, oh, I'm going to do this one. And you said, no, no, we're going to do something else today. What? And I was a balancing <laughs> and I thought I was pretty balanced. I got to go home and practice what I preach on the posture balancing. Well, yeah. Yeah. So I was kind of like, oh, I was out of balance. So... And is balance really important? Balance is, is huge. As we age, and I think older adults are more afraid of falling, and that's where a lot of injuries oh, occur. Mm -hmm. Because we don't pick our feet up, we don't watch where we're going, we're not aware of our environment. Yeah, because a lot of, uh, adults, I know, is that sometimes they miss the steps 
Exactly. And their the visual perceptions are different. Perce exactly. You know, Once again, the brain is involved, the yeah. visual the visualization of, of where they are and, and what's needed to take that step or, up or down. And what do you think about these people that are walk, but then all of a sudden somebody told them they got to use the cane? I think people should let the body adjust and try to heal itself mm -hmm. before you start using other devices, mm -hmm. whether it's a cane, a walker, or even a weight belt with some mm -hmm. of my clients. I say, get rid of it. Let's work on proper form body awareness and let's see what you can do. And if you still need it, then use it sparingly, just for safety. Okay. So, well, you know, that's a lot of good information we, we passed you, on. And uh, we're going to be getting ready for uh, our next show called Muscle Massage Techniques for various disorders, okay? So in summary, uh, your shot, we talked about uh, the uh, muscle anatomy in different yes. parts. We talked about uh, muscle pain. We talked about memory pain. Uh, and uh, we talked about some exercise that you can use, right? Yes. yes. And so we're gonna go more into that, into the actual demonstration of this yes. equipment, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So. That concludes our show, and um, you know, tune in to our next show, and it's called Muscle Massage Techniques for Various Disorders. Yep, so sounds good. We'll see you next, next show.